So I'm working on some social media cutdowns of a video that I edited previously. And I thought I would share my screen with you guys and just give you a bit of a look over my shoulder as I go through the process of resizing a 16.9 video uh, to be a vertical 9.16 video. In Premiere Pro, let's jump into it. All right, so here we are on my timeline and I just need to trim off, I want these to be, you know, sort of 30 second uh, pieces and I'm just going to delete that out. And I can delete it out. The reason I'm deleting it out, I should say, is because if you notice up here, I've actually uh, gone ahead and duplicated my timeline quite a few times. So the original is uh, still there. And then I've got, you know, update one, two, three, because I'm doing kind of multiple cut downs from a four or five minute piece. Uh, so this cut down here uh, is about right. There is just one one little issue and that is that when I move these files around um, I'm interestingly here actually I can't see the file that was here before I'll just go back to the previous one so you see here I've adjusted the color and the levels and everything on this clip um, and I want them without having to sort of go through the process of recreating, I can just, uh, you know, hit copy and go back over here and paste attributes. Uh, I've got a few options here. The one I want is the color. So that's literally all I'm going to choose. Otherwise you end up doubling up the attributes, which can be a bit pesky. So if I accidentally selected this, in addition to the sound treatment that's on there, it would it would copy whatever sound treatment is on the other one. So it would effectively double that sound treatment, which would be a problem. So let's hit OK. And that's pretty close to where I want to be. Um, I'm going to go across to the luminetry window. Now, even though my window looks a bit different to perhaps your window, uh, if you go up here to window, you can always choose the, you know, the window that we want and bring that to the fore. You can actually create your own custom look here and then you can just uh, go ahead and come under workspaces. You see I've got a whole bunch and you can uh, save as a new workspace, you know, or you've got some other options here for keeping that in the future. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just pull this back. So this particular clip you know, is not needing to be quite so exposed. Um, I think pretty sure I've got a mask on here as well. Oh no. Oh yes I do. Yes. So see there's a mask here. Uh, so this mask sits around the, um, the principal presenter and we can, you know, kind of adjust that a little bit. This little handle here just gives us just a little bit of extra um, feathering so that that blends in nicely. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's looking good now. Um, that looks fine. That looks fine. So yeah, the video is pretty much ready to resize. So at this point here, I would I've done my cut down and then I might create this as a, a square or one by one square. I might do it as a vertical video, uh, potentially four by five. So there are, you know, there might be multiple iterations. So I do my, I always work in 16.9 and I do my cut down in 16.9. So I'll actually cut down the original video. Then I make, you know, copy or two of that, you know, extract out the bits that I want for my cut downs. And then this is the easy part to resize it. We come up to sequence, come down to auto reframe sequence. And I promise you it wasn't this easy before, but it is now. Uh, we select that. You've got a couple of options here. So it's already named the file for me based on what I uh, have previously been doing, which is the vertical 916. But you can see I could make that a square. Uh, a four by five. Uh, we've got the original format there, or I could even do a custom 
sizing. So, you know, you've got all the options. This uh, motion tracking, whether you want that to be default and so on, just experiment with that and see what works best for your footage because it will it will vary, but the default's usually pretty good. Um, then finally, we've got the option here. I think the default is don't nest clips and that will replace the current motion adjustment with, you know, the the automated uh, sort of resequencing. Um, personally, I've been getting better results by nesting Nesting the clips, um, that will normally uh, take your transitions away. But because I, I do straight cuts for almost everything I do, I very rarely, if anything, maybe a, a dissolve, you know, and generally not even that. So usually uh, that won't impact me and I hit create and it's actually going to now duplicate that that whole timeline. So that's what I was just working on. That's still there. And I can go ahead and, you know, reframe uh, this as a one by one if I wish now as well. Um, go ahead and do that. So now I've got a one by one. I've got a 916. And I just go through and just check. Okay. And sometimes you might need to just give it a second to process in the background, depending on how long your clip is. That is actually a little bit still just a little bit overexposed, I think. So we'll just go in there and just uh, pull that back a teensy weensy little bit uh, on the highlights. It's always challenging with the, um, you know, with the, the sort of high vis clothing. Um, so, you, you know, your camera will be trying to compensate. Um, and what we want is, you know, nice, nice exposed face. Uh, so, okay, so we've got that all looking good there. And usually that's not actually, you know, always the case, right? So this here is if we're being a little bit pedantic, it's a little bit to the left, well, we can adjust that. So let's select that clip and uh, we go to effect controls. Okay, so if you can't see that, just go, you know, down here, make sure you select effect controls. I'm on an Apple, you might be on a PC. Um, but anyway, you'll find it in, in a very similar spot. Then just sort of scroll down. And here is the auto reframe. If I turn that off for a second, you, you, it's virtually in the same position. And it's sort of moved it slightly to the right, but I would say maybe it could be just a little bit further uh, across. So here's a reframe offset. Okay, and we can just drag that across and it's now perfect. So just a tiny little adjustment is all that was needed there. Uh, this looks fine to me. Um, certainly, it's doing a great job of taking the subject. If I just play that through, we'll just see what's happening well, here. So it's not owned and managed by council, so we pay for any of it. So that actually isn't the subject of that particular shot. This is a wider shot, which is taking in, um, you know, some stormwater stuff on the on the left hand side there. So I'm going to um, drag that across. Whoops, a Daisy, I've just gone on the wrong one. Uh, yeah, so I actually want to show more this sort of thing over here, the, you know, the pipe works and things, but I can see why it thought, you know, the beautiful bulldozer thing was uh, the center of attention. So fair, fair call. Um, okay, so that's, the community title, so that's now owned, looking better. Council, so we pay for any, everything and manage everything. And by doing that, we get to upgrade a lot of the service. And then this guy here also, uh, just needs to be offset slightly because I've got some animations which come on here and I want to be able to see them. So we use travertines on some of the crossings. I would even, you know, maybe with that one selected, I might just go a little bit further. Oh gosh, I keep going the wrong one here. There we go. So we'll go with that. I could actually make that a bit smaller. Um, one thing you can do is turn the auto reframe off okay as an option and you can just manually uh you know go back and and adjust things and if i just zoom out a tiny little bit on this so let's say this is at 25 percent, i am actually you know at the height of the image so i couldn't really you know make it smaller without that looking a bit daft so yeah so i am able to have full manual control and override that 
you know, auto reframe feature. I can just even delete it. And sometimes um, that is good. So yeah, so have a try with your auto reframing. Uh, once you've done all of that and you're happy with the end result, uh, then you can just go ahead and export that. So we can click export. Uh, just check your folder, make sure it's going to the right spot. It's going to the export folder of this particular client. When you go to export this out, always match source with adaptive high bitrate um, because otherwise some of these other settings here will ignore the fact that this is a resized video. They'll, they'll sort of look at it as, uh, you know, 16.9 or whatever it might be. And you don't want that. You want it to uh, honor the sizing of the sequence, um, which I might just show you here. Actually, we just have to go back to edit to show you. If you go into sequence settings here, uh, you can see the frame size is 607 by 1080. So, all right, so we're all good uh, there. And uh, we are just gonna export that out. It's going out correctly with the right name, uh, match source, adaptive high bitrate, and then just hit export and you're done. So there you have it guys. That is how you reframe your sequence for various social media outputs using Adobe Premiere.